Hello, my name is Eugene Hahn. Um, I live in Dallas, Texas. I've grown up here since I was eight. Uh, I am a Christian evangelical. Most of the people I spend a lot of time with are evangelical Christians. And I feel like I am on an island because the things that I see don't seem to alarm most of my friends and it's it feels kind of lonely actually <laughs> um, but I've had this um, I've really wrestled with my position on this on, on this administration and I've heard all of the conservative positions and posture on this president. Don't look at what he says, look at what he does. Look, he's tough on immigration, we need strong borders. You know, he has been great for the black community, look at the jobs that are created. He has um, pushed through pro-life um, policies. He is being strong on human trafficking. Um, he has been uh, an advocate for religious freedoms and religious liberties. Um, his attorney general has uh, strengthened um, the gender uh, definitions and um, gender is 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 uh, biological, which I do believe in. Uh, so all of these things align with my heart. So I've really wrestled um, because at the same time I've heard rhetoric come out of his mouth that is basically racist and. For example, he told all those congresswomen to come back, to go back to where they came from. He described other nations as shithole countries. Um, you know, he has retweeted videos of people yelling white power and the way he handled the, the incident with the tiki torches. And he really wasn't trying to condemn them or he was trying to walk this fine line of like not not uh, like kind of halfway condemning them so the message that I'm getting is that I am going to say racist things but do it in a way that I can plausibly deny deny it uh, but not completely deny it and he's almost I believe he's throwing bones to this right-wing um, group to I don't know like he wants to be a, he wants them to be on his side and I don't I don't even know that he is truly a racist but the 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 effect of what he's saying um, it doesn't matter if he is or not the, the result of his words are driving division, driving, um, emboldening people with these terrible views. Um, people are are being a lot, lot more ugly to each other. Um, so you know, I, I believe all this is tied into what's happened um, with the the Floyd incident and. The, the intensity at which all that is kind of blown up and exploded, uh, I believe in large part was fueled by the rhetoric and the, like the environment that, um, that, that manifests whenever a president who is holding the most esteemed dignified office in the land is condoning, basically condoning white supremacy. And um, you know, that has an effect. 
the that has an effect on the people. Um, you know, if you if you're a minority, it's a negative effect. If you're not, then it you probably don't care very much. And I wonder. I love my friends. I, I truly do. Um, I fellowship with them. We worship together. Um, you know, it's like they're family to me. But I just don't really believe that they, they, they complete, they, they, they understand um, what this language does. Or it, it's really confusing to me because they will let uh, all these things go uh, and say, "But look at this," um, and it just doesn't align with me. Um, if they were more like, wow, I can't believe Trump said that. That was terrible. That's appalling. I really hate that. That grieves me. Um, but I'm going to choose a lesser of two evils and I'm going to vote this way. But I don't have those discussions with my fellow Christians, um, at least the circles that I'm in. Um, it's always let's let's just let that go. Well, let's just let this go. Let's just let that go. Uh, or but this and and it's it's really called into question. Um, I mean it it's called into question like their character for me. Like, are you you know if, if, if you should be grieved by sin, whether it's a uh, the unborn being murdered. Um, you should be grieved by sin of somebody who is basically uh, espousing this rhetoric that certain people are better than other people just because of the way they look. Um, and I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing that. Um, you know, I mean, both of those things hurt people, um, but they just seem to want to overlook these things. And um, it really troubles me. So um, I am not a fan of Biden. I don't think he. Um, I just don't really trust him. But what we've got right now is so bad, uh, and so bad for the country that I will be. I will vote for him if it helps get rid of Trump. I'll vote for anybody to get rid of Trump. Um, so, yeah, that's my little spiel. Um, I want to just tell the other believers out there that, you know, you're not the only one. And um, I believe that the Christian church in America, the evangelical church, has, they, they want it, they, they make this political. I was hearing messages um, four years ago from the pulpit of people preaching that you can't vote for the candidate that's for, for abortions um, but then they were also saying I'm not telling you how to vote but you can't you can't if you vote that way you're not you're basically not being a good Christian and and then I heard the, the messages that Trump is a Cyrus and God was going to use him um, even though he had bad character um, so the, the church wants to be political in that respect, uh, but whenever they hear these things that come out of his mouth that are completely against uh, Christian beliefs and the Bible and what Jesus preached, they will not, they won't touch it. Um, I, had, I had a conversation with my pastor bringing up the retweet of the, um, of the white supremacy, and he, he just... He just didn't, you know, it like it just like rolled off his back. Um, he, I almost felt like he didn't believe me, um, and it's just really weird. It's it's just very strange to me how much how much grace is given to this terrible guy. You know, don't even get me started on the whole the mishandling of the COVID. So. If you're a Christian and you feel kind of alone, 
I just want to tell you, I want to speak to you directly and say, look, you're not the only one. And, you know, God, Jesus isn't a, he isn't a Republican and he's not a Democrat. And so we aren't to, um, you know, we don't, we don't worship the guy at the pulpit. We don't worship the Southern Baptist Conven Convention. We worship Jesus and he is, he informs, he informs our heart and our morality and the Holy Spirit. Um, through the Holy Spirit, we, we get to judge things and see things righteously. And so I would just encourage you to, to trust, trust those things and, and to, be, to be strengthened um, by those things that are in your spirit that are saying like, this, is, this isn't right. Um, we need, we need, you know, if we're not, if we're getting an agenda through the pulpit, um, you know, we need to go directly to the source, the source of our faith and, uh, our salvation and, and hear from that directly. So I've been more, I've been in the word more, um, I'm going to start checking out some different churches because, um, yeah, what I've seen has just made me really, it's really created a lot of disillusionment in my faith and the people that I practice my faith with. So, um, if that's you, um, I'll be praying for you. And, um, yeah, just um, let's, uh, let's follow our hearts and, and, and be in line with the kingdom. Thank you.